everybody. Uh, welcome to our Friday live stream. It's good to be here uh, for another Friday. And uh, we're going to have an interesting topic, I think, taken from the Alternative 12 Steps uh, book, where we're going to be talking about the power of the group and specifically the power of uh, 12 step groups, which are, are unique in a lot of different ways. Um, but before we get started and before we start saying hello to all of you, uh, let's see how Angela's doing over there. Angela, how are you? I'm, I'm doing okay today. You know, I, I had an exciting thing today. I went to a thrift store for the first time in over a year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it was pretty exciting. I'm used to, we still wear masks. We have a city ordinance. Um, uh -huh. And so, uh, you know, and social distancing and all that. But um, I am uh, fully immunized now. And so there's a, a statistical uh, less likely chance of <laughs> me dying of COVID now. Right. Um, and so I, uh, yeah, I went and uh, one of the workers there was putting some stuff on one of the racks and asked me, you know, if I was uh, finding everything okay, which was a strange question. I don't think I've been asked that in a thrift store before <laughs> yeah. because it's like, you know, what if I said, you know, I'm, I'm looking for galoshes, you know, <laughs> could she say aisle three? No. Um, so anyway, but, you know, I haven't talked to many people <laughs> in, in a while um, or made social chit chat. And so I'm like, okay, you know, maybe this is what we do now. Um, and so I said, yeah, um, I, I haven't been here in over a year. So this is kind of nice. And uh, she said, yeah, it was nice for us too. And I wasn't wow. sure with that question if uh, if it was, you know, it was nice for us too that you haven't been here in over a year. <laughs> like, do they have a picture of me in the back that's like, watch out for this lady? Um, or if she was trying to say, you know, that, uh, that having, you know, more people come in or if they really just preferred, you know, not having people come in. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It was really <laughs> awkward. And so, yeah, so I, I did not miss having awkward conversations with strangers. That's for sure. Um, so <laughs> I'll, I'll have to get used to that again and start putting together a repertoire of things that I can say when stuff gets awkward. But I know, you know, <laughs> when, uh, when we first started social distancing, the joke that a lot of us would tell is I've been social distancing all my life. <laughs> right. And in a way, I, I kind of have, but, um, right. and, and it was, um, I think it was, it was kind of nice not having to put myself in those uncomfortable situations of having to make small talk with people and so forth. Uh, but then again, I was missing the challenge and the growth that comes from overcoming all that. Right. But Saturday, um, I went to a party at my um, wife's my in-laws, my in-laws house. And, okay. and we all were immunized and we were mm -hmm. all together in one place without masks mm -hmm. and it felt so weird and <laughs> at one point uh susan's dad sits down in the couch right next to me and i'm like wait a second this is, is you should be somewhere else <laughs> you shouldn't be you're supposed to be six feet away so it's really right. weird to get used to that yeah. so it'll anyway. be a, it'll be an adjustment it will period. be yeah so Oh, Josie has an announcement. Do you want okay, to read that? I will. We have already 18 people here. That's amazing. Nice. Thank you, everybody. Good to see you, everyone. Yes. Thank you for supporting this um, live stream. Um, we wouldn't do this probably if there was nobody listening. So thank you so much. <laughs> so Joe's announcement. Um, speaking of groups, the Rainham, is it Rainham Agnostic Atheist and Free Thinkers Group of London hosts the International Secular AA meeting on Sunday. Oh, that's all right. This Sunday. Woohoo. Mm -hmm. London calling eight o'clock PM in the UK three in uh, on the Eastern time zone noon in the Western time zone Pacific time zone. Okay, good. That's good to know. Maybe I'll try to do that uh, tomorrow. Is that tomorrow? It's Sunday. Okay, Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Our group in KC is going to start meeting again. Um, and that's yeah. another that's another wild thing. Um, Anyway, I, I guess it's going to start tomorrow. Um, I, I kind of dropped the ball. I didn't get a hold of the guy at the church soon enough to do our training. He wanted to do mm -hmm. training beforehand. But I'm just going to show up tomorrow before the meeting and see if we can get in. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So. Need not be organized. So Not right. right. <laughs> That's right. not what it means if anyone's listening. I know that that's not what it means, but that's just what I like to say when, yeah, when stuff like that happens. So. <laughs> yeah. Well. The group, will, the group will get to know the 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 post COVID John who uh, doesn't mm -hmm. like doing anything anymore. So. Oh, that's <laughs> anyway. not true. You still do a lot. Ah, 
All right, let's get into it. So um, what we thought we would do, um, it's a short chapter, and we, mm -hmm. we thought we would just kind of do what we've done before and just screen share the chapter, go through it, stop, and, and discuss different uh, parts of it. And we welcome your contribution um, to the topic by um, commenting in the chat, the live chat in YouTube and Facebook, and also by calling our toll-free number, which I will now scroll and put here on our on the screen there. It's 844-899-8278. And I'm paying attention to see if anybody calls in, so you won't be waiting that long. So um, let me go ahead and get the screen share thing started here. And we'll get going. Share screen. And. And wait for it. There we go. And, and I think now. What I do, 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 do. Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to take this thing off, this other thing off. And there you go. Um, and I, I don't, I guess you guys can see that. It looks pretty we small. We can see you end. too. Oh, do you really see me? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You see you too, but we only see our, um, our figures there. Let me yeah, change that. The little avatar. There we go. All right. <laughs> well, it was so go. small. I couldn't tell if it was actually you talking or just the mm -hmm. photo of you. That's awesome. Okay. I hope those of you that are out there in YouTube land and Facebook land can actually see a larger version of this. Um, uh, I think you can if because if I blow up my screen, I can see it good. Okay, very good. I'm just looking at a very tiny version. So anyway, um, this is this is all about um, the power of the group. And when I was reading this chapter, I thought, wow, there's some really, really good stuff in here. Yeah. You know, so I think a lot of it I may have already known and appreciated, but mm -hmm. it was just kind of good to kind of refresh it in my brain and, and realize, wow, this is really a cool thing that we've got going here, you know, and it is kind of unique, you know, compared to other kind of groups that right. might be meeting. So uh, with that being said, um, I guess I'll go read, I'll start reading. And then Angela, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you um, take over um, at some point if you can see the screen. Are you able to see the screen? Um, I can see it okay, but I also have the book in front of me. So oh, good. good. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have an actual paper book. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's got pages and you flip them and it kind of nice. has, has a smell. Nice. <laughs> so here we go. Groups, shared energy for growth. Uh, putting the comments back on so I can see what you guys are talking about. Okay. 12-step groups support us in our recovery. In them, we identify with others who have problems similar to ours. We come together to share our common solution, the working of the steps. We meet to talk, to gather insight and courage and to share our experiences. 12 step groups are a different kind of group. The method of 12 step group, the method of a 12 step group is not the same as the method of a typical support group or therapy group. In a 12 step group, each person works a self directed program. There is no facilitator or professional leader. Members of the group focus on the process of the steps and their own recovery. The relationship among members is respectful, caring, and impartial. Group members support each other as each person works to apply the 12 steps to his or her life. In contrast, support groups often resemble informal social groups and may or may not have a professional leader. Participants are likely to be actively involved with each other and with the group process. They talk about their current and past lives with feedback being an important part of the interaction. Therapy groups are always led by a professional. Members work on their own issues with the involved support of other group members. The experience is often emotionally intense because the objective of therapy is to work with profound and powerful feelings. Some 12 step members go to support or therapy groups either can complement but not replace the 12 step group experience. Well, Angela, would you have any <laughs> comments about that little section? Yeah, I, I like how they um, how they differentiated between the different types of groups. Um, um, you know, that's one of the things that I do uh, appreciate about 12 step groups. Um, you know, the way that we talk and uh, we learn to share from our, our own experience and, mm -hmm. uh, and any of the topics, you know, how it, how we've either encountered it or, um, 
our, or worked on it or, or whatever. But, um, you know, it, it's nice to share it in that way um, because I have attended therapy groups and other types of support groups. And, uh, and I think they do have their place, um, you know, and, and can be more effective for some people than others. Um, I found, I find, you know, like I said, this to be effective because people can't argue with me about what my experience is, you know, um, whereas in some of the support, well, some of the therapy groups more, um, there, sometimes that's part of uh, the process is other people calling you on stuff and uh and you know they do it in a group setting and it's usually you know part of what they're supposed to be doing um, one of my friends uh had uh, multiple duis and had to attend some classes and um <laughs> and some therapy groups for that and that was part of their their process is that a new person would come in and have to sit in the middle of the room and they would all basically interrogate the person on why they were there and then you know um pretty much confront them on anything that that sounded like the person was lying or being dishonest to themselves or or whatever um and uh and i think that would be hard <laughs> for me particularly newly in re in recovery i i don't know that i would have uh handled that very well um but you know uh sometimes those people don't have a choice because uh the higher power is usually the government of some source uh insisting that they be there um so for me uh the the 12-step group um process i enjoy that more than the other groups that i've i've been involved with and or heard of how about you? Um, the same, the same feeling. It's more, um, well, it's informal. Um, mm -hmm. I, what I really liked and what I highlighted in there is that it's self-directed that each, you know, that there's no facilitator or leader that each mm -hmm. person, um, works their own program. And some of us individually might forget that and mm -hmm. think that we need to let, let each other know what we should be doing. But for the most part, no, each yeah. person is free to do their own thing. Um, it's mm -hmm. self-directed. And I think the idea of not having a, a, a person who's like in charge or mm -hmm. who facilitates or runs things works really well. Um, I, I think that it works well in other type of groups where they where they need where they have that too. Mm -hmm. But it's really nice to be able to have like an informal gathering where we all meet as equals and mm -hmm. just share our own experience, not trying to fix one another or be fixed by each other. It's mm -hmm. just a unique. Um, it's kind of a unique thing. It's been unique in my experience anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. well, you you know just had a training on on different things. One of the questions I had what. Um, in this section was how would you characterize smart recovery because it does have a, a trained facilitator i mean i don't think they go through intensive training <laughs> but you know there, there's a, a, a trained facilitator um and then you know the other group members i you know i don't think from what i've heard about it um they don't like inner or they don't uh give each other feedback um or do they, they you know do. So. It's smart it's okay, so do. would you consider that more of a uh, therapy group than a support group or? It's interesting. It's kind of a combination of the two because the okay. facilitator really isn't um, a therapist, not like trained mm -hmm. therapist or anything. They, right. the, th they've just gone through training that SMART provides. Okay. Um, so they're definitely a peer, mm -hmm. but every SMART group does have a... Um, does have a therapist um, mm -hmm. behind them if there's a need, you know, that kind of supports them. But okay. but they're not, th that therapist is not on hand at the meeting. The meeting is right. just run by the facilitator and the people there. So yeah, it's, it's like that. And it works well, you know, mm -hmm. for uh, those people. But I've been told that sometimes the smart meeting that you go to, you know, if you like it or not, is really going to depend upon that facilitator. I mean, that mm -hmm. that facilitator has a really important role mm -hmm. because that's the person who really sets the tone for the meeting. Whereas at an AA group or an NA group or any 12-step mm -hmm. group that doesn't have that sort of, st of structure, mm -hmm. the group itself, a group of people sets the tone. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so interesting, too, about AA. It's so hard to define AA because it depends on what meeting you go to on what day and who's there. Right. Yeah. You know? I mean, well, and just, you know, what's been mentioned, you know, thus far, you know, one of the things that, 
that uh, these authors say is that group members support each other as each other works to apply the 12 steps to his or her life. And, you know, I guess that's kind of the idea of it, but, you know, we know particularly uh, from all of the various secular meetings that, you know, some people do steps, some people don't. Um, right. and, and so that, you know, it, it's even a little bit more than, than how it can be, you know, defined a little more traditionally. So I was going to say that in this book, they talk a lot about um, the steps because this book is about the steps. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, yeah. that, that's why I, I guess that's where they got that. Huh. <laughs> but so, cause some people are going to say, no, I don't have anything to do with the steps. And that's right. fine if you don't, because every yeah. person has a right to do whatever they want to define those steps or not to define those steps in any way they want to. But yeah, this book was specifically about the steps and for people mm -hmm. who want to work the steps. So they're yeah. incorporated into this quite a bit. Yeah. So, yes, uh, anchor there. They talk about that in this chapter a little bit. Um, he was asking most AA meetings have someone chairing the meetings. Isn't that kind of their job to keep the meeting on track? Mm -hmm. Um, and they talk about that a little bit on, you know, yeah. on uh, meeting guides, but anyway, yeah. shall we continue? We'll continue. I'll let you okay. read this next section if you don't mind. Uh, yeah. solution. It's exciting. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, because that gives you that the groups are guided by the 12 traditions. Oh, so, boy. Ha -ha. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, the shared solution is more important than the shared problem. And this is on page 112. 12-step um, 12 groups often organize around a shared problem. Uh, some of them are Overeaters Anonymous, Emotions Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous, Narcotic, Narcotics Anonymous, and Al-Anon for the families of alcoholics. 12-step groups also support adult children of alcoholics and people with chronic illness and disabilities. I haven't heard of that one. Mm -mm, um, whatever the shared problem of the group, it's the steps that are the focus. The shared problem is only the starting point. This means that as time passes, group members are able to move beyond the problem that they all share and apply the steps to many other areas of their lives. For example, in an AA meeting, recovering alcoholics talk about their struggles with worry, anger, relationships, low self-esteem, compulsive overwork, and other ongoing difficulties. Focusing on the steps, they are slowly able to move beyond their alcoholism and expand the 12-step solution to their other life-diminishing emotions and behaviors. And I love that last part. Um, I, I had forgotten about it until I, I read this today, um, that... Uh, to move beyond their alcoholism and expand the 12 step solution to their other life diminishing emotions and behaviors. I think I just like the life diminishing emotions and behaviors. I mm -hmm. hadn't uh, heard that uh, yeah. or remembered that part of it. And it, that's such a, a good term or a good way uh, for me to think yeah, about, you know, my larger recovery and, and what I'm, I'm doing. And, uh, and, uh, I think it's uh, easier than saying, well, not easier to say, but <laughs> I like the concept more than character defects and, mm -hmm. and uh, shortcomings that, you know, these behaviors um, and emotions that I sometimes uh, engage in are, are life diminishing, that, that they take away the quality of my life and, and they're not kind to my future self. So, um, yeah, I really like that. Yeah, and I just about, oh yeah, I know that's going to, I was thinking, it was talking about, and it, what you just read, it was talking about the importance of talking about um, other issues after you've gone through the steps and, you, and mm -hmm. you're drinking, you're, you're, you're pretty much solid in your sobriety now, you're, mm -hmm. you, 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 you feel comfortable not drinking, but you still have other things to work on, you know, mm -hmm. you might be depressed, you might be afraid of this or that, you know, and you yeah. have things to talk about. And that's usually in most meetings, in my opinion, what we kind of do discuss. I mean, there's mm -hmm. usually a topic and we're not talking about our using, but we're talking about what our life, our life issues. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, sometimes it seems like that, um, that sometimes people kind of lose sight of this, I think in meetings, mm -hmm. I'll give you a little example. I went to a meeting last night and it was kind of a strange meeting because the meeting was based on one of my podcast episodes, right? Oh, wow. Oh yeah. So I sat there during the meeting while people were listening to this episode, there were only six people there. Okay. Oh, okay. And it was not a secular meeting. Okay. Mm. But the, the, um, the, the episode they were listening to, the person was an atheist and everything, but they also prayed. I mean, they were, they were, they were a spiritual sort of atheist, you know? Yeah. Um, but they also had a real, um, 
kind of uh, lax attitude about the steps. I mean, they work the mm-hmm. steps, but they don't all have them memorized to heart, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then during the podcast, we talked about depression was one of the topics that we, we mentioned because mm-hmm. she had to deal with that. She had other issues that, that came to light after she got sober. And so mm-hmm. we talked about that. Well, when, when they were finished listening to the podcast, there, there were three people who didn't like the episode. <laughs> and it was really interesting to be there. Well, you don't like it. <laughs> and they said they didn't like it because we got off track with, I'm um, talking about things mm. that didn't have to do with sobriety. Wow. Um, and like when you guys are talking about depression and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff, they said that didn't really have anything to do. You should have just kept it simple and focused on recovery. And mm-hmm. I thought to myself, well, <laughs> that was a real important yeah. part of my recovery. So I don't know. So yeah. I think that, I don't know, man. Um, I don't know where that comes from, where, where they get that, that idea that you can't talk about something other than alcohol. Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, you know, there's a couple of things within the within AA that that they may take a little too literally or um, or it it's a uh, it's something that's talked about here in a lot of the more traditional rooms too. And I, I kind of stick it with um, the people that say you can only talk about solution. That if you mm-hmm. mention you know stuff from your past as an example, that you know you're not staying in solution. And uh, and so um, you know that wasn't helpful for me or hasn't been helpful in my recovery to just stay in solution. If, if people were doing that when I attended, you know, meetings, um, as a newcomer, I don't know that I would have stayed, uh, because I would have just heard, you know, what, uh, what their lives are like now, (laughs) you know? And so I wouldn't have been able to identify with them. And, um, and so I need to hear, you know, different parts of, of, everyone's stories, you yeah. know, when they share so that I can identify. Um, because if I can't identify with them, then, you know, why am I there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, I need to find a different program or a different, uh, different ways to, to access help. Um, yeah. So, you know, um, I, that's never been helpful to me. Um, but I have heard it a lot as well. Um, that, uh, yeah, or talking outside. Uh, one thing with my home group is that, um, you know, I've only been attending Thursdays mostly, um, but uh, I've you know heard about other uh, the Tuesday meeting and uh, and I know for the Thursday one at least for the last three weeks I believe um, we've been talking about uh, what would be considered by uh, more traditional groups as outside issues, mm-hmm. you know, so mm-hmm. uh, mental health or depression or you know um, how some of our our difficulties have um, have actually um, made us better people, you know, uh, contributed to our lives in a, in a positive way, you know, ultimately. And, um, and yeah, so it's something that we kind of, um, we ignore, I guess, (laughs) or, or it's just, you know, the people that attend seem to, to have a larger view of recovery and, um, Mm -hmm. and are able to handle that without, you know, going into the, we can only talk in this way. So, yeah. Yeah. Tracy and Anchor and Joe Bob were having an interesting discussion about smart facilitators and whether or mm-hmm. not they're peers. Yeah. And Joe Bob initially initially said that they aren't peers. Um, I think is what he said. And forgive me if I if I misread um, there. And then Tracy said, "Yeah, but the smart facilitators we could, we go to our peers." It's mm-hmm. really interesting because the smart facilitator, I think they are a peer in the sense that they are also a person in recovery. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah. they're a person who's also using this, those tools that they're bringing to the meeting. Right. So in that sense, they are a peer, yeah. but they also have a, um, a different role than mm-hmm. the other people in the meeting because they have to facilitate that meeting. Mm-hmm. And if they recognize that there's someone like when they go do their check-in, if they recognize mm-hmm. that there's someone who's having a problem, they will, and not just the facilitator, but the entire group will, will kind of help that person through it you know, but the facilitator being the guide. So it's like the facilitator is a peer, but, uh, but does have a different role. And that role is kind of one to lead and guide that meeting. You know, it's a different, it's really different. It's really different in AA in that way. 
Um, yeah. One thing that I really want to do, and I'm going to try to make time to do, is attend more smart meetings because I do want to learn about it. I mean, I went through the training and everything, and I but I've been to very few um, smart meetings, but I do find it very interesting. I like the tools, and I want to know more about it. I want to I want to actually have the experience of attending those meetings and so forth, and I just have not made time to do that. But um, there's a guy that I interviewed who's a smart facilitator, who, and we'll be posting his episode in a couple of weeks. But he is from St. Louis, and he does a meeting in Kansas City. And so um, I'm going to try to have him on the podcast more often and learn more about SMART. So it's kind of, I find it really interesting, that whole dynamic of the facilitator and, and how they do things. Because, man, totally, totally different than, than what we do in AA. So right. anyway, that was a really interesting, interesting conversation you guys had there. And I hope I didn't um, um, completely ruin it <laughs> with, my, <laughs> with my pontificating. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was really interesting. Um, then a Bobbert points out that there's usually somebody that will shout outside issues <laughs> because they don't really understand Tradition 10. And we will be getting in traditions here pretty soon. And uh, Bonda Jones, shared energy for growth. You have mentioned previously of being kind of kind to my future self, which I loved hearing and have adapted into my life. And my future self keeps thinking my past self, that is the power of sharing the group, hearing what you need to hear, sharing what might help someone else. Yeah. yeah. And Anchor says, um, that's a little messed up, Bob. <laughs> I think it's something else. They talk about. It's something else. Is something, something else is messed up. Anyway, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, the messed up. What's messed up is the outside issues thing. Mm. And then, and Joe Bob yeah. says, uh, "Good point, Bobber. In my experience, nearly no one knows what the tenth tradition says. They confuse and conflate traditions ten and five. Five confines AA's primary purpose. Okay. Right. Well, that's a good segue into good. this next <laughs> part. Into right. my favorite to... topic, <laughs> the traditions. <laughs> yeah. And again, you know, I do like the traditions. I'm not opposed yeah. to the traditions. You know, I, right. I, I, I do them. You know, I think they're okay. I think they're great for AA, super mm -hmm. for AA. AA should yeah. definitely do the traditions. It's a great way for AA to operate. But um, I don't want to operate uh, myself that way all the time. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> Um, groups are guided by the 12 traditions. The 12 traditions are to the health of the group what the 12 steps are to an individual's recovery. They were adapted by AA's first international convention in 1950, followed, following our shortened and paraphrased versions of the 12 traditions. Now, I will say this. This will make it, this is, this is kind of good to read these because I thought these yeah. were actually pretty well written. Um, I haven't seen too many... Um, interpretations of the traditions, sec secular mm -hmm. interpretations. I've seen a few out there, but this one I thought was really actually pretty good. Right. So um, I'll just go ahead and read them. So the first tradition is common welfare comes first. Personal recovery depends on group unity. Mm -hmm. All right. Stay together, guys. Otherwise, if we all we do is fight and argue, we're not going to stay sober. Group conscience is the group's authority. Decisions are arrived at by group conscience. Minority ideas get thoughtful attention. Leaders themselves are no authority. They are trusted servants. I like that. It doesn't say, doesn't, doesn't the, um, the actual tradition say something about, um, our only leader is God or something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or God as he expresses himself in our group. Right. Conscience. Yeah. 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 Um, and I've had people say, you can't be in a group if you don't have God expressing himself. In the, <laughs> but then other people point out, but it says God may, he may, he may yeah. not. Okay, anyway. May, may not. Yep. <laughs> the only requirement for membership is to show up at a meeting. Now, that is interesting. Just show yeah. up at a meeting. It doesn't say you have to have. You have uh, to honestly like, show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to honestly show up. <laughs> there are no membership requirements, no rules, and no dues. I do like that, though. Just show up at the damn meeting. That's yeah. all you need to do. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, how do you determine if someone's honest? It has I know. an honest desire to stop drinking. Yep. I think most of us, you know, if we were fully honest, we didn't have a desire to stop drinking. We had a desire to, you know, flee consequences, you yeah. know, so. I think I told you once that I, I really regret the time when I asked somebody, a newcomer, do you have a desire to stop drinking? <laughs> Jesus yeah. <laughs> right. I did not drive that guy away from me. He, he kept no. coming back and he became a, it became a, a happy <laughs> member of our group. So yeah. yeah, no, I had that funny incident. I think I've shared before where I had a sponsee who was celebrating a 
an anniversary and uh, they attend different meetings. Um, it was one of the ones that is a God person. And she shared something along the lines like that of that, you know, and then I, I uh, met my sponsor and she, all she asked was if I had an honest desire to stop drinking. And I'm like, <laughs> I have never asked anybody that in my life, you know? Yeah. And so I have no idea where that came from. I think it was just, you know, the, the parroting that sometimes happens, um, yeah. you know, and that I, I did too. I didn't, you know, use that, but I, I did uh, parrot uh, early on when I think about it, you know, about, you know, you have to uh, do the steps or, you know, you need mm -hmm. to go to meetings, you know, just mm -hmm. I, I was much more uh, towing the line of, you know, um, what other people were saying as far as the process right. of uh, AA, the steps in recovery. Um, and now I'm, I'm, you know, reasonably laxed about that yes, as me well. Too. Yeah, I've changed so, a lot with that way with myself too. So yeah. yeah, it's 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 funny to look at your old self and say, oh my God, that was really embarrassing. Right, right. <laughs> but that's, yep. what, that's what we are. And they even yep. talk about that here, how you go through different phases of development, right. which is really yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah, and I think if somebody like even listened to um, the steps that you and I did together, um, mm -hmm. those podcast episodes, I think we're, you know, in a different place now on, on yeah. some of those, you know, we, we, if we did it again, it would be different, it's you know, true. Than, That's true. you know, what we did even, and that was what, just two years ago, three years ago now yep. or something like that. Yep. So. Yeah, constantly so, yeah. evolving. And that's what keeps yeah. them, That's what keeps it fresh. And that's what keeps it interesting. Yeah. Each okay. Number four, each group is autonomous. Its only responsibility is to work with the steps and to follow the 12 traditions. Okay. Um, each group has one purpose to be a support for recovering people. Okay. Uh, groups never endorse finance or associate with outside related enterprises. There must be a clear boundary between 12 step groups and programs such as treatment facilities, counseling services, workshops, support groups, and so on. Yeah. I'm going to fix something here real quick. Okay. Um, okay. Each group, uh, groups never endorse finance. Okay. You're fading Everybody, in and out. Am I, I think it'll adjust here in a little bit. What I did, I turned, I turned the um, echo cancellation off because I was hearing my echo. Oh, okay. So, um, hopefully that'll stop pretty soon. Do I sound better now? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Oh, God, I shouldn't have played with that. <laughs> now here I am again. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. okay. Well, it'll 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 work itself out. Okay. okay. I'm gonna just forget. I can't. I just keep hearing my echo, and it drives me crazy. Okay. Um, <laughs> groups. Where are we? Groups. Six. Um, six. Yeah. Okay. Groups never endorse finance or associate with outside related enterprises. There must be a clear boundary between twelve step groups and other programs such as treatment facilities, counseling services, workshops, support groups, and so on. Uh, and that actually is a smart thing, you know, mm -hmm. to, keep, to keep the group, you know, independent, separate. It's not affiliated with the jail. It's not affiliated with the courts. Yeah. It's not all of that Well, technically, it, it still technically, is in not, many yeah, places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's not supposed to. Not yeah. supposed to be, yeah. no. Yeah. Um, and Paula says, is the group actually responsible? For no, it isn't, Paula. It's just that this book is about working the steps. And I think that's why they talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the group's purpose isn't really about working the steps. Yeah. Um, not AA groups anyway. Um, anyway, um, seven, each every group is fully self supporting declining outside contributions. This keeps groups independent non members may not donate money, goods or meeting space, a collection taken at meetings pay for rent and supplies, which I think is smart. Mm -hmm. Uh, groups are non-professional service to the group is voluntary or is, is volunteer and done without pay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, organization within a group and among groups is kept to a minimum. That's interesting. <laughs> the way to put that organization within a group and among groups is kept to a minimum. Um, yeah, that's probably true to with most groups and it probably is smart. Too, I think maybe know. they, uh, standardization may have been a better yeah. term for what they're, yeah. talking about on nine, I think. But yeah. anyway, yeah. And groups have no opinion on outside issues. This neutrality on all issues keeps groups from being drawn into public controversy. And another thing I'm just thinking about to myself, just thinking to myself, it does say mm -hmm. groups have no opinion on outside issues. It doesn't say I don't have an opinion on outside issues. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, but it is a kind of a good principle. Hey, don't don't mm -hmm. bring other crap into the meeting. You know, don't, you know, 
that's not what we're about. Public relations policy is based on attracting members to the program rather than on promoting it. Members' anonymity is always maintained in the public eye and in the media uh, for public relations purposes. Mm -hmm. Anonymity is the foundation of all the traditions. Groups are guided by the principles of the steps, not by personalities. I do like the way that's worded too. Um, that you're just you're guided by the principles that that we're trying to practice and not personalities of the people. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, comments anybody? Anyone anybody want to call in about that? Um, and Joe Bob did answer Paula's question. No, Paula, the the author's personal interpretations are not opinions. Yeah, yeah, it's that's their, true. That's true. It's a yeah. book about the steps. And that's why they're always mentioned there. And it's there. And you're right. It's the author's opinion. Yeah. And it, it, part of the title is a secular guide to recovery. Guide. So again, yeah. it's a it's a guide. It's you know nothing in right. here is is uh, scripture. Right. <laughs> right. So. All right. Well, we so, can move on then. Okay. Um, a simple meeting format and guidelines for talking and listening. And so this is you know their interpretation or their experience of what right. what that would be. The format is the basic structure of a meeting. It lets us know what to expect and when to expect it. Once a simple structure is established, anyone can step into the role of temporary leader. The leader keeps the meeting within the format, but has no other role. The treasurer pays the rent and buys supplies for the group. Everyone shares responsibility. Members gladly take turns at service positions and other group duties. That's a bit of a stretch, but yeah, (laughs) that's the idea. (laughs) The real business of the meeting is the mutual identification and support among members. Following is a commonly used meeting format that makes good use of limited time. The guidelines for small group sharing ensure equality, respect, and safety for all. Uh, One, the leader opens the meeting on time and uh, the affirmation of serenity is recited in some cases. Yeah. (laughs) So um, two, five to 10 minutes are taken for self introductions to greet newcomers, to read the 12 steps, to take care of group business and for announcements. A donation is passed or posted in the comment section on Zoom. Um, A sign up sheet for speaking at meetings may also be passed. And so, yeah, at larger meetings, I guess that's how, how they do it. I've never attended a meeting where you had to uh, do a sign-up sheet. Yeah, um, back but, in the old days, uh, when I first started out, our group used to do that. Um, mm-hmm. The P3, the group I went to, um, they used to pass mm-hmm. around a pad of paper. And I don't know why we did this, but we all signed in. <laughs> interesting <laughs> and they saved these things going back to years so it was like oh, you know wow. you could go back to 1968 and find out who was at a particular meeting it was just kind of biz- yeah <laughs> Okay. Uh, Number three, the person who has previously signed up for the meeting gives a short informal talk Uh, The focus is usually one of the steps. We talk about the realities of our actions, thoughts, and emotions, and about how we are using the particular step in our lives and how our own 12-step program is helping us. Speaking at a meeting is an opportunity for growth. The only feedback the speaker gets is a hearty thank you by the leader. Um, And number four, before the meeting breaks into smaller groups, the leader may read the statement. Um... And, you know, this isn't uh, something that, um, that's that been read at any of the mm-hmm. ones that I, but I do recall, I think, um, hearing something similar to that in Alateen when I was younger. And so mm-hmm. it might be more um, on the, the family side. Yeah. Uh, but the views heard in this meeting are those of the speaker. We each interpret and work the 12 steps in our own way. In your small group, everyone will have a chance to speak without interruption. When people speak, we do not give feedback unless requested. We do not give advice. We take what we want from the meetings and leave the rest. So that might be helpful to add <laughs> these days because sometimes uh, sometimes that uh, that isn't how things go. And, mm-hmm. and sometimes uh, advice giving is... Uh, is uh, yeah, presented. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. And uh, number five, the remainder of the time is spent in small groups where all members have the mm. opportunity to talk and to hear what others have to say. And so, I, you know, I 
I didn't experience that. Uh, you know, most of the meetings that I've attended in this area um, don't break out into smaller sessions. Um, I do recall in the 80s, though, like I said, in Alateen, mm -hmm. I think that some of the Al-Anon groups did that. Um, yeah. You know, my mom was a part of, of that stuff. And so I recall, you know, some of her meetings being a little bit more in that process. And in Fight Club, which is a very accurate representation of life, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it appeared that a lot of their group sessions were, were held like that. Um, yeah. The meeting format that we use is, is somewhat, you know, uh, we, at least how it's changed to Zoom and, and some of it was, you know, very similar before. Um, but we do um, have somebody, and we've played with this over the years, um, but uh, the the chairperson, um, you know, reads the uh, format or boilerplate or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. you want to call it. And they're the one that kind of guides, you know, the meeting and uh, oftentimes either calls on people to share if nobody is sharing or picks some sort of a uh, format for sharing. So uh, popcorn has been uh, popular as of late mm -hmm. where, you know, someone shares and then they pick somebody else to share oh. and such. And so it kind of bounces around like that. Um, but, you know, we've tried all, all different types of formats as far as sharing. And uh, and it's sometimes fun to um, to change that up a little bit. Uh, sometimes, you know, when we were in person, we just kind of like go around uh, the room. It just depended on how many people we had at, at the meeting um, on how we would do that. But like I said, there is no sign up sheet <laughs> right. for, for doing that. Um, I suppose in some of the larger meetings now on Zoom, you know, when you raise your hand, that's kind of like a, you know, a similar idea. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you need to raise your hand in order to be called on to, to speak. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Oh My God does that um mm -hmm. but uh yeah the the main ones i attend um are smaller and so uh, yeah. we haven't had to do that too much how about you um well i was anchor has an interesting comment and oh. i never thought about this that they do have people sign up at his group because they're going to use it for contract contact tracing if it's necessary oh so yeah isn't that interesting yeah. so if you're meeting in yeah. person hey everybody we want to know who's here because if, mm -hmm. if there's a COVID outbreak we'd like to start tracing yeah Very interesting. yeah no i know that uh that um at least one group a women's group in boise had um started to implement that before mm -hmm. um before the meeting locations went into lockdown and everything yeah. um and that uh and that at one of the meetings i attended uh for that group when they started doing that um there were a couple of people who refused uh to sign that and uh and so you know that was interesting as well <laughs> it's like well if you don't have compliance then you know how how are you going to be able to do that? And and uh, fortunately, I guess, uh, for them, lockdown did happen. And so they didn't have to address that. But I'm glad that Anchor brought it up because, you know, yeah. that's something that people need to consider that yeah. if they're planning to do that and somebody doesn't you know, sign in, mm -hmm. then, uh, yeah. Interesting. Are they going to how are they going to handle that? Interesting. So, yeah. Boy, I know our group is going to have a lot to talk about when we now that we're getting back together mm -hmm. again. It's 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 so weird to have this thing of getting back to, together, and then this mm -hmm. pandemic is not over by a long right. shot. Right. Right. But so many of us are yeah. immunized now, which gives us a little bit of freedom, you know. Or yeah. So in, in the U.S. because I US. know that in, in oh, Canada God, it's not quite um, no. quite the same either, and no. that you know there are restrictions on. I think they call it uh, moving from either health districts or uh, mm. something like that. And uh, and that, you know, um, John, John and I, well, not you, John, but <laughs> my yeah. John, have uh, a kiddo in the Portland, Oregon area. And that they're um, having uh, by county now um, either tougher restrictions or they're dividing them into critical and um, and uh stuff on uh the number of cases because they're they're going up again and um and having problems so i think that yeah many of our our areas will start to experience that again mm -hmm. too so yeah yeah um about the groups breaking up in smaller and mm -hmm. smaller groups that was pretty common now when i when i like my first three five years i guess in the program i did go to a lot of different groups and um, at that time, there were some large groups. The South Kansas City group was large. Um, 
the Unity Group was large, and uh, a group. And you guys, well, you don't know these mean, names mean nothing to you, but there were a few larger <laughs> groups, and they would break up in in maybe two meetings uh, usually, um, and um, but that I, I haven't seen that um, lately. I mean, I haven't seen that. Um, prior to COVID, you know, over the last few years, but I haven't been attending those meetings as regularly as I used to. So mm -hmm. I don't know. So it used to be fairly common. Um, but anyway, back to this thing, this is just a general, I, I think that this is like, like a good way that, that a meeting could operate. It's just baby, basically a suggestion mm -hmm. or something like that. But yeah. I think the bottom line is that the, that, that it's just a very simple format. I mm -hmm. mean, you, any, but you can do whatever you want to, you know, yeah. that's, the, that's, that's the beauty about AA is like, like they, like we always joke, a resentment, a coffee pot is all you need. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But it's basically just two people that want to get together and help each other. You can do yeah. whatever the hell you want to and call yourself an AA group. And and, right. and run your meeting however you want to. Yeah, and like the one you you said you attended was it last night? That, yeah. Uh, that I I think I saw that one in our uh, Facebook group. Is it the that they use different podcasts and uh -huh. things as as a way for a group topic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, uh, I mean, can you imagine? You know, even prior to this, I, that would have been kind of an odd group out, <laughs> an unusual group. And now it's like, oh, yeah, that seems like a good idea. Why not? Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, we have a lot of uh, comments going on here. So, yeah, Paula um, says her group, uh, a large group um, had to had the mask going on. A few folks wouldn't wear war. them. Mm -hmm. Oh, a mask war. Mask yeah, war. that's not yeah. good. And Joe says uh, Toronto's having their asses kicked in wave three. Oh, so, shit. I'm sorry, yeah. Joe. That's a bummer. I tell you, this yeah. thing is rough. And and God, what's happening in India is just unbelievably um yeah, sad. horrifying. Super yeah. sad. Yeah. So and Jackie's asking, did you contact Fred? I didn't. Were you I'm able so to? Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Know. We're all holding you accountable. I know. I, I, you I'll, know, I'll I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm a guy who never does what he says he's going to do anymore. Yeah. I'm just, oh, it's, God. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I know. okay. Be kind to yourself. Do, con but do I will contact check tracing on you. for Fred. Okay. Yeah. And Bobbert says, in the 80s, breaking up to smaller groups was popular. Yeah. I had a conversation with our central office years ago, the director of the office. And mm -hmm. she'd been around for a long time. And we were talking about changes that we've seen in AA over mm -hmm. time. And she says the one thing that she noticed is that there are more groups, but smaller groups. Yeah. And I think that's true because when I was first starting, there weren't as many groups, but there were a lot more yeah. larger groups and some really big groups. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that, that, that it has changed a little bit. And maybe, maybe that's what you're noticing, Bobbert, is, you know, mm -hmm. that you're seeing less of that maybe, um, or maybe you're just seeing big groups that just hanging out together. So I yeah. don't know. Well, I think it took me a while to figure out that there is a difference between a group and a meeting and oh, that, yeah. yeah, you know, some groups can have multiple meetings and, and stuff. Um, right. So, yeah, so I think, and I, I still probably refer to them almost in the same way, you know, just without thinking about it sometimes. So Yeah, you know, um, a group, this is how, I, and this is, and it's different from different places. Like I know in California, they have, they don't necessarily, okay, maybe in, in different places in California, but I've talked mm -hmm. to people like in Los Angeles and they always mm -hmm. call their meetings, they call it meetings. I have a meeting mm -hmm. and the meeting might even have a GSR. Whereas around here, the, mm -hmm. the group has a GSR and it's the mm -hmm. group that participates in the service structure. But like in, in this Los Angeles, this person I'm talking in Los Angeles, they said that over there, they, they have meetings and they don't, yeah. what are you talking about group? I don't know what you're talking about. Right. So it is kind of, it is kind of different. <laughs> right. All right. Here's yeah. the, I like this section here. We'll move on. Sure. We move on. Yeah, we can. Okay. So group process is how we talk and listen. I really like this section. And we actually did a, we did a, we did a live stream on this once. Mm -hmm. um, 12 step groups must model health for the members. It is important that we don't engage in the same behavior we are trying to recover from mm -hmm. without the use of clear guidelines. We are apt to lapse into old familiar patterns and the group may collapse under the weight of our combined confusion, anger, and hurt. Groups function well or poorly because of something called group process. Group process is simply how we talk and how we listen. Mm -hmm. When we take our turn to talk, we remember that our responsibility is to ourselves, not to other group members. Using the 12 steps as a guide, we talk about what we need to talk about. We talk about how we understand the particular step being discussed and how we are using it in our current lives. We talk about a problem, our feelings, our actions, and reactions. 
We talk about the new life options created by working the steps and the additional problems our new options are creating. We don't. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know that I've ever heard that uh, in a meeting before, yeah. but it's true, right? Yeah, it is true. You know, yeah. People don't talk about how, you know, recovering causes, you know, yeah, more yeah, problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, can actually, new problems, new kinds of problems. Yep. We don't need to have others agree with us or understand us. I like that. Um, and it's very true. In fact, we don't even need to completely understand what we're saying ourselves. Confusion and strong feelings are always at home in meetings. They are a good sign that changes are happening. The understanding comes later as we continue to make progress in our program. When others talk, we support, accept, and love them by practicing large spiritual listening. We put our own opinions, ideas, and judgments aside. We listen with an open and relaxed acceptance of the person speaking and of what is being said. We don't evaluate or judge. Non-acceptance and judgment are the results of narrow, shallow think listening. Yeah. We know that any opinion we form is likely to apply only to ourselves. Large listening is called detached listening because it is detached from the personal limitations of our emotions, judgments, and evaluations. Detached listening is an expression of spirituality and trust. When we listen with an open acceptance and non-evaluation, the speaker feels heard because the speaker is heard. Being heard and accepted without correction is something most of us have never experienced. Yeah. The circle of safety created by respectful, emotionally neutral listeners enables us to say whatever we need or want to say without fear of being put on the spot or fear of censure. Having others listen with an open, relaxed, and neutral acceptance is a vote of confidence in our ability to work things out. Smiles and a few kind words provide human connection, warmth, and caring. I really like that. Yeah, that's so good, isn't it? It really is good. Yeah, I just, I, I, you know, wrote down again <laughs> that uh, non-acceptance and judgment are results of na narrow, shallow listening and that large listening is detached because it is detached from personal limitations of our emotions, judgments, and evaluations. You know, I think that's such a good way to, to think about it and to phrase it. Um, and, you know, one that, I wouldn't have really thought of because usually detached listening sounds, mm. you know, negative, mm. um, you know, like, uh, like you don't care or something, mm. you know, when somebody is detached, uh, that's generally, you know, what comes to mind for me at least. Um, mm -hmm. But I love the idea that the, the um, detached listening is um, detaching from, you know, the personal limitations of our emotions, judgments and evaluations. And, and it's a great way to, to think of it, you know, I think uh, some people might say, you know, it, it's the ego or letting go of the ego. And I think this is a, a kinder <laughs> way to say it, even though it's applying to basically the same thing that, you know, we try to get, uh, you know, outside of our own judgments and, um, and personality and just, you know, be open. So I think it's, it's an excellent uh, piece of writing um, and, uh, in way to think about, you know, mm -hmm. what our role is at meetings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes you'll hear that, uh, that, you know, we're just there for the newcomer. And, and, uh, you know, I think to myself that, well, yes, you know, that's an important reason why we're there, but I'm not just there for that. Um, because, you know, uh, my recovery isn't just about helping other people, you know, it's, it's a big part of it, but uh, it's, uh, it's, that's one area of it. And, uh, and I think that when I've, you know, felt the most balanced in my recovery is when I've been able to stay within the space they're talking about here of, of being detached um, from, you know, what my judgments and ideas and um, emotions are about what other people are either saying or doing or not doing or, you know, all of that stuff when I'm able mm -hmm. to just be present and, and, uh, and listen and, stuff that yeah that those are some of the the times in my life where i you know i've felt what some people would say you know spiritually well but i <laughs> generally say i feel balanced and uh and yeah and i like i like this the idea and it's, and it's true that when i'm listening to somebody mm -hmm. i'm taking what they're saying and i'm applying it to myself and i'm, I'm doing that i'm not i'm mm -hmm. not doing it consciously it's just mm -hmm. what i'm doing and I learned that in AA, 
you know, I'm not looking at the person and judging them mm -hmm. by what they're saying, but I'm thinking about how it applies to me. And sometimes it might not apply. Mm -hmm. Now, do I judge people when they're talking? Sure, I do. You know, but mm -hmm. but and, and, but that's just human. That's human nature. You know, uh, that 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 does happen. But hopefully, they're not seeing that expression on my face. <laughs> <when they're talking. laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's but, part of the problem with Zoom is that you know, know. somebody is always seeing your face usually. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. It, it's true. Um, yeah. It is. Uh, we do. Well, I think part of that is one of the sayings that gets passed around a lot is to listen for the similarities. And, right. and I think that's really what, you know, we're, we're probably doing. And so, you know, not, not just True. if it, it pertains to me or not, but just what is a, a, the similarity in, you know, what they're sharing, you know, do I have experience um, in some way with that in my recovery or not? Yeah. Um, and, and that is really, really helpful, particularly if you're, um, you're a secular person and you can't get to, you know, secular meetings, you know, now mm -hmm. it's not as much of a problem, <laughs> but, you know, prior to the pandemic, it really was. And so I, you know, had people that um, couldn't make it to our meeting. So I would attend other meetings with them. So they'd feel like they had, um, you know, a secular buddy, uh, at least at that meeting. And I would, you know, usually uh, suggest meetings where I knew the people there that, you know, may have been more traditional um, in their AA program, but that I knew were really open-minded. And uh, and oftentimes, you know, I'd leave the meeting feeling like, yeah, that was a that was a good meeting. And and you know, one of these people would leave going, oh, they got it all over the place. And and I, you know, mm. and the difference was that, you know, when I hear people talking, um, usually <laughs> in, in a meeting, um, I listen for, you know, what they're, they're actually doing. And so what I would hear is, or what someone might say is that, you know, I, um, I was struggling. And so I, I got down on my knees and prayed and I, uh, you know, and then I went for a walk and then, you know, I did yoga. And what I'd hear is that, you know, I went for a walk and I did yoga and <laughs> those right. types of things, you know, um, and, uh, and the other person just heard that, you know, that they uh, turned it over to God. Right. And so, yeah, so listening to similarities and, um, and being able to, um, really, it's empathy, I would, I would mm. guess, you know, that mm -hmm. um, uh, going into the meeting and trying to, you know, be empathetic um, is helpful. Um, because I think sometimes we do get a little bit jaded, or we can, if you've attended, you know, meetings for 25 years, <laughs> you know, and heard it all, you know, it, it might be a little bit difficult to continue to, to be, you know, like, where's the similarities. But, you know, if you're at least trying to be empathetic, and, you know, and remember, you know, when you've felt the way the person is feeling regardless of what the circumstance is then uh then i think it's you know it's helpful yeah. uh what does anchor say uh, do you think it's acceptable to walk out <laughs> of a meeting if you don't like or agree with what you are hearing because i am guilty of that yeah i i think sometimes uh you know um it, it really depends on the meeting and uh, yeah. what's going on um I'm trying to think of uh, when I've walked out of meetings. Um, um, I've been I, walked out on before <laughs> a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and I tell you, the one time it happened, I deserved mm -hmm. it. I deserved it. It was, <laughs> it, it was at it was at the Live and Let Live group, and I was I was a new and you were I was not a living newly, and let living. <laughs> I, know, I was a newly minted atheist in AA, oh. and I I had written I swear to freaking God like a four or five page manifesto. <laughs> oh my god! Oh wow! Uh, yes, it was awful. And I and I read that at the speaker meeting, and it was all it was more like a revolutionary. Um, <laughs> idea for AA or something and oh, it was awful anyway one guy walked out on me and at the time I was like really upset that he walked out on me but now like I I, I realize and it's like you know what I he I don't blame the guy for walking out on me but right. then another time I was at a group and there were like uh, it was like three o'clock in the morning or something like that I was doing an alkathon and there were only two people in the room and one of them walked out <laughs> it's like kind of weird wow but anyway but um yeah. Have a, I yeah. think I've probably walked out on meetings. Um, I don't know if I've done a speaker meeting where it was like really obvious where, you know, when I walk out, where, where it's going to be noticed or anything. But I've left meetings that um, I just didn't feel comfortable at or mm -hmm. that were good for me or whatever. So I think I think it's okay. You you need to do what you need to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, Joe I says don't, he goes, I, sits in a different room. Yeah. I don't think that 
I'm trying to think of, I mean, there's been many a meeting that I felt like I needed a meeting, um, you know, needed to go to another meeting because of that meeting was so um, <laughs> difficult or uh -huh. dysfunctional or whatever else, you know, um, but I, I don't know that I've actually, you know, walked out on any because of the discussion or something. All right. All right. And, uh, you know, I don't know that anybody's walked out on me mm -hmm. speaking. I think most people who probably would um, generally stick around so that they can, you know, try to figure out a way to argue with me afterwards. But, uh, but in general, you know, no, I don't think that anyone's, anyone's walked out that, that I'm aware of. So, yeah. um, so you yeah. never know too, when someone walks out, maybe they just need to go to the bathroom. Maybe, maybe they have, it's true. maybe they yeah. didn't have an appointment or they get something else they got to do. You know? Yeah. Who, so, who knows? Who Could knows? be performing brain surgery. You know? <laughs> yeah. Please do bomb squad, you know, expert. Yeah. yeah. Go do your job. So, yeah. um, <laughs> so wow, I think the well, consensus is yes, it's okay. If you need to go, you need to go, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, look, it's, it's seven o'clock. I know. Do you think it's okay yeah. if we go over a little bit? Uh, we don't what do people much. say? I yeah, think. I think it's good. All right, we'll do it because I don't. We don't have that much further to go, and the the rest of it, like I like the I like the way it, it finishes up, where it talks about how to how to know what a good healthy group is. Yeah, so, sounds good. Angela, I'll let you take it from here. Okay, the look and the feel of a supportive group. We want our groups to support our growth and self acceptance, personal change, and happiness. Some groups do better at this than others. They're, they are made up of people, and people are anything but perfect. So most groups are a mixed bag of dependable support and little irritations. Sometimes big irritations, but irritations. Mm -hmm. uh, the following are some positive things to look for. One, the group is open. Newcomers are immediately welcomed and included. This is one of the best indicators of a supportive group. Yes. Two, the group feels like a safe place. We feel an emotional comfort within the group. Three, group members share laughter, many smiles, and sometimes tears. Mm -hmm. The emotions expressed are genuine yes. and natural. Yep. Four, people are free to be as open or as private as they choose. Respect for privacy mm -hmm. is crucial. Mm -hmm. There is no uh, probing. Five, right. the group makes good use of time. Mm -hmm. And that's where yeah. we were talking about earlier about the, the chair of the meeting has that responsibility to make sure things move. And that is yeah. not always easy to do. No, it's not. Yeah. And sometimes the, the additional group members um, need to help with that as well. There have been times where somebody is either, you know, going off for an extra long time or they are getting off topic and in a, um, or in a, a difficult space. And so, um, so sometimes our group members at least would uh, redirect the conversation or interrupt and say, you know, this is actually the topic and it's time for someone, you know, another person to share or something like that. Yeah. So anyway. Um, everyone has equal status, length of time in the group or 12-step program doesn't confer special status or privilege. Mm -hmm. Dang it. Uh, <laughs> so that there's a feeling of mutual respect. There is no competition among members. Mm -hmm. Eight, it's not apparent which members have social or other connections outside of the group. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I, I like the idea and, and depending, you know, um, you know, in some places, uh, that's definitely true. I think there's still, you know, we're such uh, judging creatures. I mean, mm -hmm. it's part of our survival mechanism that we can mm -hmm. tell by how someone's dressed and their demeanor right. and language. And, you know, if if most of their problems are difficulties with, you know, their grad school <laughs> <Right>. or, <laughs> you know, that, that extra, you know, the additional property and, you know, Cancun, yeah. then yeah, yeah, it's a you, you kind of get, but I, I like the idea yeah. <laughs> because I do think that's true. Yeah. Um, so, um, eight, it's uh, oh, nine, when members are having a hard time or making decisions that may sabotage their recovery, the group doesn't interfere. Mm -hmm. Instead, other members smile and say, Keep coming back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they uh, greet returning members warmly. Uh, 10 members work on active program, work an active program in the group. Uh, sometimes this looks like backsliding and confusion. Confusion. There are no presentations of a polished program. 11, no feedback is given unless it's asked for. And 12, the 12 traditions are honored. Um, it, it were the 12, those traditions, so important um, yeah. for an AA group. 
um, yeah, I, th I thought that was great stuff. And it's kind of, it's kind of good to know, you know, um, especially if you're new, you know, cause mm -hmm. you, you go to a lot of different groups and some groups might not be so, so healthy, you know, it's possible. Um, but I think, I think most groups probably are, um, and mm -hmm. most of the meetings that you go, you go to are, they, they, most of them have these qualities that I've experienced. Um, there's only been a very few that I've been to that seem to stray from this ideal. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the most part, um, I do feel that, you know, the, the one, the one thing about an AA meeting or pro and I, I'd say this is true for any 12 step meeting that is really interesting is that all sorts of people, and we were talking about the social status and everything. Sure. You might know mm -hmm. that this guy here is the president of some company, right? Mm -hmm. But he's sitting right next to some, 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 uh, someone who might be homeless, you know, right? and, yeah. and they, and they, um, they have a common bond. And it's just really interesting to see the different, there are different people in the meeting that you normally wouldn't mix with probably, right. you know, and, yeah. but you talk to comfortably at, at a meeting. Mm -hmm. It's just, that is really interesting. I like that about AA that, okay. that because it's free, you know, um, there's no, the only price we have to pay is from our drinking and drugging and so forth before we got mm -hmm. there. That's the price we pay. You know, other than that, once we're there, we'll throw in a buck or two, whatever you can, you know, mm -hmm. so, and that does equalize things quite a bit. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and I think of what they talk about with the, the detached listening um, and being conscious of that is important too. Cause like I said, with the, we actually did <laughs> have one meeting where um, like five shares in a row were all about grad school. And oh, really? <laughs> uh, yeah. And so, you know, we did need to, to talk about that at a, well, somebody brought it up at a business meeting on, you know, how, um, you know, the perception and um, whether our meeting needed to, you know, keep that in awareness of mm. how we talk about things. Cause you know, not everybody is, uh, you know, in a spot where they're dealing with grad school. And right. uh, so how can we share our experience in a way that is more accessible to people of all socioeconomic and educational experiences? Yeah. <laughs> so. And something unique about 12 step groups and 12 step meetings, no feedback is given unless asked for. Mm -hmm. Now that's, that's the ideal. That's, that's, you know, there mm -hmm. are some groups who, who stray from that and we call it crosstalk, I guess, but yeah. um, some groups stray from that and they like it that way. That's fine. Mm -hmm. They have the right to do that. But in most cases you don't get the, you don't get the, you don't have people giving you feedback, you know? Um, yeah. And and uh, not directly, at least. I mean, sometimes yeah. we're, we we phrase it. Yeah, True. sometimes we phrase True. things that that it's going that direction. But again, you know, sometimes we're aware of it. Sometimes we're not. But, right. uh, but the idea is there. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, should we just conclude things now, and um, should we finish up with this very last um, section? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So when we each keep coming back, yeah, this is kind of, this is kind of good. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll read that. Okay. Our group, our group exists to support us in our recovery. Each of us is in charge of our own program and it's never the job of the group to direct us. We determine our own realities, our own directions, our own needs, and the working of our own solutions. A healthy group will support us no matter what our personal point of view, the issues we face, our personalities, who we are or what we have done a healthy group simply helps us use the steps or not mm -hmm. because of the practice of large detached listening we are able to support the recoveries of a wide range of people with differing points of view some of us are eccentric some of us have painful issues that are difficult to talk about and difficult to hear about and some of us have checkered histories i had a checkered history mine was more chess but yeah <laughs> <laughs> Detached listening makes it possible for us to support each other when we are following divergent paths. We believe we are each guided by individual inner strength and wisdom. Another person's inner strength and wisdom may look as if it needs some help, but we keep hands off and we practice trusting the, the spiritual strength of others. As we stay detached, we develop a deep respect and awe for each other's inner spiritual strength and wisdom. We learn to love each other in a large way, a new way that lies beyond personal likes and emotions. Large trust in other people's inner strengths and large listening ha lead to large love among us. This is the miracle, and it can happen in 12-step group. Oh. Yeah, the miracle of connection. Hallelujah. The miracle of connection. Yeah. Yeah. And, so. it, and it's so true. You know, I've had a rough week and I've, I've had several group members that have uh, gone on walks with me now that we can go on walks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and it's it's great because I can, you know, tell them all the crazy stuff going on, you know, and uh, 
and they don't, uh, you know, don't judge me or don't think that I'm I'm less of a person or less of a an AA or or anything like that. Um, you know, they they just listen and uh, and I really appreciate that of my my home group. It's uh, it's definitely a place where I feel like I can be myself and that that's okay. Yeah. You know, I'm just still thinking about tomorrow when we <laughs> when we was having our new meeting and it's like cuz I have not been I've I've been away from the group pretty much for since COVID and mm -hmm. so it's going to be weird getting back and seeing people and meeting people I haven't met before. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I definitely, I definitely need the, I, I definitely need it. I definitely need mm -hmm. the connection with people. I need the personal um, connection. You know, it says, you know, we keep coming back when each of us keep coming back. I've been sober for a long time and I don't really feel like I, my, I'm, I'm in any danger, in any danger of sleeping. I'm, I mean, drinking, <laughs> sleeping. I, yeah. And I'm not in any danger of sleeping because I've I been drinking coffee probably... all damn day. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I just am looking forward to seeing people, but I am a little bit nervous about it too. So yeah. I don't know why, but um, well, hopefully you could, change. You, could, you could start a support group for going back to, <laughs> going back to recovery groups. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I, I sure enjoyed it. And it was really great um, listening to, um, not listening, but reading what you had to say <laughs> out there. Um, the comments in the chat has, have been really, really good. So it's it's been it's been a great uh, meeting. I really enjoyed it. And thank you, Angela. Yeah. Uh, as always, uh, you did a great job. Um, and what a great book this was. I really did yes, like this, this chapter. Is, this is one of my one of my favorite books. So yeah. it was pretty cool. All so, right. Well, there we go. Till next week. Take care, everyone. Thank you for Take being care, here. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week for another live stream. We don't know what we're going to be talking about, but we'll figure it out and let you know. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.